The Starship rocket carrier, the most powerful and largest rocket in history, conducted its fourth demonstration flight on June 7th. It is also the most affordable. Super Heavy, the initial stage, effectively replicated a landing over the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 30 kilometers from the launch site. The Starship spacecraft, in the second stage, executed a powered landing maneuver over the Indian Ocean. Starship's immense payload capacity and reusability will substantially decrease the cost of transporting one kilogram to Earth's orbit, the Moon, and beyond. Currently, Falcon 9, the least expensive rocket, can deliver one kilogram for approximately 3,000 USD. There is no global competitor that provides a lower price. Nevertheless, the cost of transporting a single kilogram is anticipated to be tens of thousands of dollars with Starship. The Super Heavy Starship carrier's performance and size are not revolutionary aspects. What is revolutionary is the design approach that facilitates rapid, cost-effective, simple manufacturing and complete reusability. The outcome is a substantial cost reduction and a simultaneous increase in payload mass to orbit. SpaceX launched 1,000 tons of cargo into space in 2023. Currently, the entire world, primarily China except SpaceX, transports 250 tons of cargo to orbit annually, a cost that is at least twice as high as that of SpaceX. The future Starship will enable the launch of tens or hundreds of thousands of tons of cargo annually. These new capabilities have naturally grabbed the Pentagon's interest, which plans to use a variety of SpaceX capabilities and services. The Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, intends to test cargo drops from the Starship spacecraft in fiscal year 2025 or early 2026. Ultimately, Starship will allow for the transfer of up to 100 tons of freight anywhere on Earth. AFRL will also support the commercial industry for rocket-powered global transportation as part of the Arox Star, Rocket Cargo System Technologies and Research Program. AFRL, for example, is investigating the use of starships to transport military goods via suborbital and or orbital trips anywhere in the world. This will include so-called point-to-point delivery, P2PD. To that purpose, AFRL awarded SpaceX a five-year contract worth 102 million USD through the Rocket Cargo Program. Of course, important technical challenges must be addressed along the way, as well as the essential worldwide infrastructure and the overall concept of rocket cargo transportation. Even though a C-17 Globemaster II can accomplish it, one thing is certain. Rocket P2PD will always supplement and extend traditional air transport. As per AFRL personnel, rocket cargo transportation can be integrated as a regular part of the SpaceX launch cadence and treated just like another satellite in the launch flow, or contracts can be put in place that allow the military to fit into the launch schedules when needed. The military can reduce costs by an order of magnitude, which becomes very attractive. The plan is to continue refining the concept of global rocket transportation, along with the advancement of Starship development. The Starship's mission is not simply to transport rocket freight from one location to another. Instead, it can use an atmospheric maneuver to release the payload in mid-flight. The cargo might be transported on customized pallets with parachutes, similar to those dropped from cargo planes or in return capsules. Inversion Space, an American startup, is designing the smallest return capsule. The Starship might unleash hundreds or thousands of these capsules. Inversion capsules may also carry warheads. They could be used as conventional returnable warheads in a MIRV, multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle system. This capability, to strike any point on Earth with a huge conventional strike, independent of the caliber of adversary air defenses, is intriguing for deterrence and escalation management purposes. Orbital bombardment could normally respond proportionally to the restricted use of tactical nuclear weapons. One might also imagine starships filled with specific resources serving as army prepositioned stocks. APS starships would wait in Earth's orbit and transport goods to anywhere in the world in an hour and a half. They might also be loaded and prepared near launch pads in the US. The US Transportation Command, TRANSCOM, which coordinates and manages the strategic transport of troops, materials, and supplies worldwide, is particularly hopeful that military materials can be quickly deployed in the Asia-Pacific region in the event of a conflict with China.
The advantage is that while going to Southeast Asia, Starship can take off from Texas, cross the Caribbean, fly around Africa, and land in Guam via the Indian Ocean. This is the exact trajectory of Starship's fourth suborbital test flight, which took place on June 7th. In the longer term, the Department of Defense is looking into the prospect of quickly delivering supplies and personnel to orbit and the moon's surface. The Pentagon's major purpose is to promote the growth of the commercial market. There are two explanations for this. The Pentagon will no longer be forced to rely on restrictive and prohibitively expensive government options, such as SLS. Second, it will boost American companies' competitiveness in the worldwide market. A week ago, the Defense Innovation Unit, DIU, announced the first of several planned contracts under the novel Responsive Space Delivery Project with the Spaceport Company, which is working on creating mobile launch platforms for rockets from sea-based platforms. As per DIU, a sea-based launch platform is a strategically significant capability that enhances access to equatorial launches while enabling sensitive launch coordination by avoiding heavily trafficked airspace. Now, do you think rocket-based delivery is too risky? Let us know in the comments. We discuss such interesting topics every day. Please like, share, and subscribe for more such stories in the future.